Here's a giant thank you to all my Patreon members. Your support is greatly appreciated. This video is sponsored by Raid Battle Legends. In full disclosure, before I begin the review, I want to let everyone know that I purchased a full price copy of EDF 6. Now, on to the review. Welcome back, longtime EDF fans and newcomers to the series. I know why you're here. You want to know all the fine details regarding the latest mainline entry in this awesome series. It's been over five years since we last held a newly released mainline entry in our hands, and in that time we have seen many offshoots to the series come and go. We've had the graphically impressive but somewhat forgettable Iron Rain drop in 2019, and the quirky but fun World Brothers in 2021. Now it's time to once again dive back into the mainline formula we know and love. It's time for EDF 6. The story of EDF-6 picks up three years after the end of EDF-5, after the alien invaders known as the Primers got their butts kicked, they tucked tail and ran, leaving a large regiment of their ground forces behind. The Earth Defense Force, now tasked with mopping up the remnants, has spent the last three years doing just that in their attempt to put the world back together after seeing around 90% of the Earth's population laid to rest. However, unbeknownst to them, the alien invaders weren't done and have concocted a plan to exact their revenge. That's all I'm going to say about the story, because any further details will ruin what I consider to be a really cool addition to the lore of EDF. So I'm going to stop the story details right here and move on to the sound. Regarding the sound, there isn't anything really new or different compared to prior games in the series. You will hear the constant chatter of soldiers on the battlefield, coupled with the excellent sounds of war, the sounds of the aliens mixed with the sounds of gunfire, and giant explosions. It all makes for an audible treat that we all have grown to love over the years of playing the series. The old adage of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, applies perfectly here. The sound is excellent, and perfect as always. Sandlot knows what they're doing, and they do it well. When it comes to gameplay, if you have played EDF 4.1, you've played EDF 5. And if you've played EDF 5, you've played EDF 6. You still gather armor boxes and weapon boxes like before. You still play through the missions just like in past titles. The rhythm and flow are still pretty much the same. That's the easiest and simplest way of saying it. The gameplay feels very familiar to past titles. But that's not to say there haven't been some significant improvements and additions made. We still have the same four classes of characters to choose from, but in the latest entry, Things have been shaken up a bit. The Air Raider, for instance, has had his turrets removed and given to the Ranger. In place of the turrets, the Air Raider has now been given numerous types of drones that come equipped with a large assortment of different armaments. What was once a class relegated to mainly support roles, we now see capable of holding his own without needing assistance from the other classes. Regarding the Ranger, as I had mentioned a moment ago, he has the ability to use turrets. These can be housed in a new slot called Backpack, so he doesn't have to use one of his two weapon slots. These are just a few of the changes that have taken place within the character classes. In addition to all that, adjustments have been made to the weaponry as well. Weapons will reload faster if there is still ammo left in the magazine. Certain weapons will now fire faster than they did previously. The fencer's dash cells have had the number of dashes increase significantly. Plus, all the classes now have a vaulting mechanic, which enhances their traversal immensely. No more getting stuck on certain pieces of scenery and having to jump to get clear. Now your character will just climb right over. I almost forgot to mention the new camera angles you can choose from in the options menu for your character. You can have the traditional view of old, or you can have your soldier standing off to the side and zoomed in, bringing you closer to the action and giving you a clearer view for lining up certain attacks. We also see the addition of new enemy types to deal with. You have the bobblehead-like androids who come in a handful of varieties, all of which wobble and bobble around the battlefield in massive herds. The Kroll, which also come in several varieties, are octopus-like enemies that bob and weave around the environment, stretching and contorting as they blast at you with their laser cannons attached to elongated tentacles, or how about the Scala, I think I'm pronouncing that right, who are giant fish creatures that love the belly flop and slide over you as you run for your life. As you can see, there have been quite a few new enemies added in addition to the tried and true insects of old. You will still have to deal with ants, spiders, hornets, as you have numerous times in the past, as well as the cosmonauts and colonists. 
If there is one area I would like to see improved in future mainline entries, it's that of new insect types. While ants, spiders, and hornets are as fun as always, it would be great to see new additions of the insect variety like we saw in some of the spin-off titles. It would add to the freshness and give fans of the series something new to smile and get giddy over. I personally think it's about time. Taking a look at multiplayer, you will find what you have always found when it comes to EDF. For those who enjoy local multiplayer, you will find the standard two-player split-screen co-op mode, which makes me smile every time I see it as so many other companies have done away with it. Sandlot remembers those of us who enjoy sitting down with a friend in the comfort of our own home and blasting some buggernauts back into outer space. For those who prefer an online experience, there is that as well, and just like in the previous titles, it's just as much fun as always. Dashing around the battlefield using your quick chat wheel to holler out a much needed command or say something goofy is here also. This is another area where if it ain't broke, don't fix it applies. Multiplayer works and it works well. Now for a little constructive criticism. This is the part where some of you will probably get a little miffed with me, but before you do, I hope you're willing to hear me out and consider what I'm saying. I'm in no way the authority on all things EDF, nor do I view myself as such. Like you, I'm just an avid fan who has been enjoying this series immensely over the years. But I have to be honest that some things are getting a little stale and in need of a revamp. This is just my own personal observation and opinion, guys and it in no way is better or worse than your own. So before you blast me in the comments, just view it as a differing of opinion and nothing more. The mainline numbered EDF titles have been the most loved and solid renditions of any of the EDF games that have come to market. The combat has been the most enjoyable. Their character classes offer play styles to fit just about anyone's liking. The wealth of weapons offer a variety of fun that can't be ignored. However, despite acknowledging all this, I can't discount the fact that a part of me wants something more. I've loved every mainline entry, including this one, but I find with this entry I'm not as excited as with previous games. As I mentioned earlier, I deeply wish we had more insect varieties to fight. I love the new entries we saw in titles like Insect Armageddon and Iron Rain. But despite getting new alien enemies in 6, I truly wish for more insect varieties as these are most what we find ourselves fighting in each mission. These are the true grunts of EDF, and with a world of insects to draw from, I'd love to see some new cannon fodder entries to bring a freshness to the battlefield. Regarding the character classes, since Earth Defense Force 2025, which was released in 2014, we have had the joy of using the Ranger, Wing Diver, Air Raider, and Fencer. While all four of these classes are awesome, and I don't want to see any of them leave, I feel that after 10 years of EDF games, it's time for a new class to join the ranks. Something fresh that brings new offensive and defensive capabilities to the table. A new face to join the fray. I don't hate what we have, but I would like to see something new. Another addition I would like to see is that of true customization. For too long now, the only customization we've had is color swaps and the choice of a civilian or soldier attire. With the amount of hours we as EDF fans devote to each game, I would love to see the option of making the characters more personal. The ability to change up cosmetics, backpacks, helmets, tops and bottoms. The ability to place patches that were earned through certain achievements. The ability to make the character truly yours and different from everyone else's on the battlefield. A character you can call your own as you sank hundreds if not thousands of hours into the game. Once again, all this is just my own personal opinion on the matter, my two cents as it were, just something to consider for future titles. In closing, I just want to say that Earth Defense Force 6 is an awesome game, and in my opinion, the best entry in the mainline series to date. As of today, I have nearly 300 hours in the game and have enjoyed myself immensely. The new additions and changes to the gameplay have changed things up in a way that some will love and some will hate, but I personally love the changes and think the majority of you will as well. So grab your blazer, load up your Lysander, and throw out your turrets. It's time to hunt down those alien invaders once again. EDF, my friends.